of a deeper understanding of the Evid Ivri is slavery and redemption, given Tavshim and Ches, as one. Rishen, the topic of Yevil, returning to the roots, given Tavshim and Ches, as two. Rishen, the topic of an explanation of Ma'in Shemitah Eitzel HaSinai, and proof from his passion for Mashiach, as three. That was an invalid entry. Last week, we started uh, talking about the union of Shemitah, and we explained the first Rashi and Rashi's Bahal, Ma Inyan Shemitah, Eitel HaFinai. And it's a Kalash that a Zayi Shemitah. That the Australian scholars say in the Dictokayim Namu will be seen, I could have been treated as Mizrahim, but I would say that also everything, every part of every mitzvah was said to be seen. Um, but that doesn't answer fully the Kash of Rasha. So why Shemitah? Take a different mitzvah, take Maika, take Bata Bacharov. So the Rabbani Shalom should have not mentioned the birth of the Cholot in Florida, and, and it should say Bahana and I would know that just because the birth of the Cholot, everything was given to Sinai, the same thing would have been. So why Shemitah? Last week, he said, Pshat, because Sinai is liable. It's the 50th day. And... Uh, we found an, an opinion of the, uh, just like there are seven years, seven times, and the 50th is the angel. So there are seven weeks, seven times, and the 50th is Shavuot, the Yom HaChemish, the Halsey night. So that's why Dr. Shemitah, the Shaykh of the Halsey night, and the Spanish deep. Uh, the Ramban says it's a big study. Um, I want to approach this, says the Hashem, from a, a different angle. It's true that in these two weeks, the Har and the Chukai we prepare for Shavuot, the Yaynach Hamishim, the day of Yaivu, then the Torah says, the Mishaych HaYayivu, Hei Meyalu Baha. And like Rasha says in the Sechta Beitza, when the Yayivu, the Shaito will blow, they should go up and, and be how, they, and to be the Kabbalah, the Torah. And uh, like the Gemara says in the Shoshana, Yayivu means the Shaito. And Yayivu, you blow Shaito, and that proclaims Yayivu, like it says in Pashas Amaya last week, two weeks ago. The scout and Shabbat and Shaita Tua Bechaydish Ashri, Kelsa Bechaydish, Yaiva and Vim. And the Shabbat and Mishal is the Zayt and Mishal Mishkat with the Shabbat. So, um, it's just sad that it's Yaiva. The original said, the Hamic original said that he believes, and the original was the Tzadikim and his dial said he was a Nisham of Mashiach. He believes that Mashiach will come before Shabu. And therefore, when we finish the Yikha, which is like the Pausha before Shabu, like the mother says, in Megillah, why do we learn the Chukaisi before Shavuot? Because the Shavuot is like Rosh Hashanah, the Tzich Hashanah, the Kila Vaisara. So Rosh Hashanah will be a Chisara. So they will learn the Pasha before Shavuot, because it says in this week's Pasha, at the end of the 49 Klavis, the Zechati is Bresi and Yankov. And Yankov comes with a vote. Five times in Tanakh, one time in Chumash, we have Yankov with a vote. Because Yankov, and five times in Tanakh, we have Eliyahu without a vote. Because Yankov, Yankov, being the Tukamashkin from Eliyahu with a vote, 
that they'll come and be Mavasa Mashiach. So this week says, the Yanki Rabino says, I'm holding your mashkin, I'm not giving it back to you. Come and be Mavasa Mashiach. So the Zachat of this Yanki is in this week's Sadra, have a little Kayach of Biyasa Mashiach. Besides, we know the Zaya says that 50 times the Tears Mitzchayim is mentioned in the Torah. The 50th time, that's Biyas HaMashiach, Yaivu. The Lord of Eden will come back, the Shaita will blow, so, 50 times it says so, you see it in time and the time. Which is the 50th time? We don't go according to the say that the Max says. The Max was a very big nikubal, meredic, meredic grace. Anybody here was ever, ever now to say it? Nobody here was now to say it? Yes. Huh? You were? Were you on the start by the base of Kaddish? Were you by the area Kaddish? So by the area Kaddish, you're going to see that there's a triangle, the three Kaddish and a triangle together. The area Kaddish, the, um, the, 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 the uh, Rav Shreim al-Kabbat, that's Mechab Rav Lechadzai, and the Ramak, the Meishe Kardavari. So, um, so the Ramak said that it doesn't go according to the Seva. That, that, that there is one Yetzirah Mitzrayim in the Torah, which is the 50th time, even though it's not number 50 according to the Seva of the Torah. Which is it in this week's Seva? Right at the end of the Tichach. So to the Ramak said. So in other words, the Shah Hanun of Yitzhak Mitzrayim, which means Biyat HaMashiach, we have in this week's Sadra. And the original says that the Anchor of Binu of the Vav is in this week's Sadra. So we have two Adam Naman. So, um, uh, when you come home and the Shiach isn't here yet, polish your shoes very uh, diligently, you know, to be, actually have a bright luster, because the Shiach might come before Shabbos. And it's just a Shabbos when we have him twice in the Sadra. And I said that it's a stickle remnant, but you do that in Sadra the Chukai site, were 49 colors. These 49 colors in Tmimius are really brachas. The Zayas says so. But they're concealed into colors. And these are, so the Ayram, it, it, uh, um, it could be said that the 49 colors are the 49 Shiyadim of the Golas. And then the 50th, immediately after the 49th Klala, it says, the Zechati Yerem Baruch Hashem, and the 50th Shah, and here it comes to the day of God. And I shall say, see, I can hear it in the time. So, we will do it this way. Um, um, Those of you who were last year in our Anuna sessions would remember I'm going over some pratim very shortly and then uh, add to what I didn't tell you last year. Last year we um, we spoke about the Kuzri and the Rambam the, how our amuna is firm, it's true, it's irre, irrefutable. You can't be machish our amuna. No faith in the world has an amuna standing on two feet. 
like we have the Yiddish Emuna. Because we have a Messiah all the other religions don't. We have a Messiah. How did the Christian religion originate? Yashka came. He was a very fine Jew. He's still better than, than the best guy. The Gemara so And um, And he, he taught the guy a different amuna. And he was a very charismatic person. Perhaps he showed them some tricks. And they believed him. Of course he should have believed him. Whatever he said makes sense. Because he told them, don't worship the sun. Don't worship the, 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 the idols. Don't worship this and that. There's one the Bainish Shalayim. And I am his son. Chazashalim. <laughs> So, but it brought them closer. To, it, it made more sense than what they had for them. It did bring them closer. He said, Amdam wouldn't say it. I would be afraid to say it. Yashka served the purpose. He taught the world the concept of Mashiach. So that Amdam said that when Mashiach would come, he's going to have an easier job with the world. Because Yashka already introduced the whole concept of Mashiach. But they have a false Mashiach. The Rambam says that in two places. In Hulchitz Malachim, in our Rambams, which you're going to see upstairs, you won't find it because it's censored. The guy took it out. With all our Rambams, our uh, photostats of the Vilna edition, which was printed under the Russian government. The Swadish Rambams and the old manuscripts all have that. And he also writes that in his, his Igreis Taiman. But they believed one person. He could have lied to them. Well, he certainly did lie to them. The, how did the, the, the second biggest place in, in, in the world originate? From Mohammed. He was a Meshuggah now, an actual Meshuggah now. And he told the Arabs whatever he told them, and he forced them, he was very strong, and he killed whoever didn't believe in him. And he started the Mohammedan religion. One person. And, and he told them stories, and they believed him. The Abdul Alaf of the Alaf, the Yiddish Amun is brought together different. We don't believe any individual. Our amuna is based on facts that you can't be makfish. The klal is, in history, everything, every event which was witnessed by multitudes, by hundreds of thousands of people, by millions, that goes on the generations, and that you can't be machish. Can't be machish then. Because if somebody wants to say something wrong, the other guy will say, how come I didn't hear the same story from my father as you did? Let's say, there, there are a lot of stories and, and storybooks and novels written about Alexander the Great whom the Gemara calls Alexander Meikstein, who, who, who formed, who conquered all of the, the Medinais and who formed the Greek Empire. <laughs> the Shaila is, if Alexander the Great's horse was white or gray, whatever the books say, you can uh, take it with, a, uh, with some skepticism. But that there was Alexander the Great, the great emperor, who conquered all these Medinas, which went down into history, and nobody can, 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 they can challenge the truth of that. Because it's a thing that millions of people experience, and it went down. Nobody can say that Julius Caesar didn't exist 2,000 years ago. A little person. 
Christ, if he had his gun tooth knocked out or not, I don't know. But the fact is that Julius Caesar conquered all the European Medinas and the Asian ones around, and he formed the Roman Empire. That's a fact. And it's run down into history. You can't be machish something that, that people experience and it goes down. Everybody knows it was a George Washington. Whether he chopped on the cherry tree or not, I don't know. But there was a George Washington. Hundreds of thousands of people had cycles with him in the Revolutionary Army and later when he became the president. There are Michigayim today who want to be machish the Holocaust. And all the governments, which are all sunny Israel, the French, the English, well, especially the French, the French are, are certified and to submit all those governments, they consider it a, trim, a, a criminal act if somebody is Marxist, even the Germans. Because it's ridiculous. I think that hundreds of thousands of people knew and are aware of and, and, that, and, and that all the armies and, and, and that the Nazis know, the Germans know, and they're all te te testimony, uh, bear testimony to that, besides those who survived it. And, and the... And Uh, what happened, and they found all those dead bodies and those courses and those criteriums. You can't be Marxist there. A thing that happens for a multitude, you can't be a Marxist there. For all your soil, saw Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim was a story which took place in 50 days between the first day of Pesach and the 50th day, Matan Torah, that's all called Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. And the Torah always tells us 50 times to remember Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. The Ramban says in Elmaya that the period between Pesach and Shavuot, you may have seen as Chalamayid. Because it's one Yom Tov. Pesach and Shavuot is one Yom Tov. In many places at the end of Shavuot, you think for south of the Pesach. It's, that's when Pesach ends. That's the end of Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim starts off when Rebbe Shah sends Moshe Rabbeinu, the man, the man, Tehidu, the Ani Hashem, the care of the earth. The Goyim should know. Pare should know. And the Yidin should know. The man, the man, the Sapa, Bosnia, Ben Chaven, 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 the purpose of Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim was to show the Yidin that he is a Rabbi Nishraim. Millions of people witnessed Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. And the Golden God of Mitzrayim. And the Amuda Eish and the Amuda Anan, which a phenomenon which lasted 40 years. And then the Mun. Excuse me. 40 years the Mun fell down. At the end of those 40 years, uh, and there were millions of people who saw the man falling down every day and Shabbos not. And at the end of those 40 years, Moshe Rabbeinu rode down in Chumash, like it says, the Tzayvish and Tzayvish. I'm going to speak, but I just want to speak only according to the church of Iksad now. I won't go into the Madrash Chazal. Because I like you are man in the northern Madrashi Chazal. But Russian how a guy should look at it, who just has the, the Teresha Dixav. You have the story of Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim and Teresha Dixav in the Chumash. You have the story of the mum, and at the, and, and Ubnay Yisrael was a man Abraham Shana. And at the end of the 40 years, Moshe Rabbeinu took the Torah in, in, in Vayelach, Moshe Rabbeinu rolled on the Seyfer Torah, and he gave it to all the Eden. And all the Eden were told that day, that in Kisvul Echem is a Shira Zeis, that it's a mitzvah to write on the Seyfer Torah. And he gave, according to Torah Shabbi Alper, he gave uh, each shave it a Seyfer Torah, which he wrote a certain Seyfer Torah in one day, and one in the Kaidish of the Russian. 
من دو تا رو تو استایرش وقتی که تو بخم تا شیر از اسلام دز بنا اسرائیل ان ان دی رول داون دی سایت تو تایر ان اول دی یز ناتی ان دی فور یی از رای بو تو لوک ان دی سایت تو تایر ان سی دات وات ات واز ریتن ان ات واز ویتنس بای دم اول دی یز سو دی من فولین دم اول دی یز سو دی ان دی ایش وی ان دی ان ان اول دی یز اول دی یز سو سو دات that that water came out from a rock. All the heathen saw what happened to that this happened at the end, at the end of the 40 years, what happened to Gus and to Abiram, and, and they saw the Almighty of the Kairach, and, 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 they, and they saw all the other Nyanim. All the heathen saw it. And even the tears Mitzrayim, many, many survivors saw it when it was written down the site of Taira. Because all the men, who weren't 20 years old by the Meraglim, survived, and they lived at the end of 40 years. So, it was written down. And that sacred title, all the Eden, all over the world, this re- not, not, notwithstanding uh, 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 geographical barriers, have the same sacred title, the same sacred title. And, um, it could be that the shark and have to a doctor with a hey, and we have to a doctor with a Alice. But it reads the same. Okay, so the same sacred title. And that also probably Moshe Rabbeinu gave them different sacred titles. Like this. I won't go into this now. Like the Spartan said, that each shape has a different shah of So I'll confirm them. But it, uh, everybody got the same sacred Torah. And this is a sacred Torah that they passed on to their generations, and the same can copy your sacred Torah, one from the other. Ad hayayim hazen. You can't, you can't be my Christian. Our amuna is irrefutable. It's something that has been witnessed by multitudes, but we don't believe a yachid. Last uh, year, I, I, I explained you that Shadda Chaydesh is the first mitzvah. Because we believe in the Torah because of Martin Torah. And by Martin Torah, the Rabbani Yishraelim, Martin Torah, of all the mafsim of the Tiyat Mitzrayim of this 50-day period, the climax was Martin Torah. When every yid became a novel, millions of yid, men, women, and children became nazim. And Rabbi Nishlarim spoke to every one of them. Like the Torah says, Panem, Panem, Dibber, Hashem, Aleichem, Imachem, Mitaycha, Eish. Face to face. Every Yid was a Nabi, and they heard the Torah to Dibber. And, uh, and, uh, and like it says in Pashat, Shos Hanan, the Moshe Rabbeinu, it says, farewell to Klal Yisrael. He tells them, he tells them, would it ever happen in history that you ever have such a thing that the Rabbani Shalom should speak to an entire nation? No, nobody can boast of that. There were individuals who came and said that they're in the Dayim. But not to, not to a multitude, but not to tell you that every need was a Navi. Hashanah Om, Koyim Elikim, Medaber, Metoicha, Medaber, Metoicha Eish, Kamoicha. You heard the, you heard the Rabbani Shalom talking to you. And by the Har Sinai, the Rabbani Shalom talked to Moshe, and all the Yidin heard the Rabbani Shalom talk to Moshe. And he was appointed then to be the Navi of Klal Yisrael, to give them the Torah, to give them the Torah Shabbi al Like the Pesach says, Let everybody hear the way I speak to you, the Ben Yisrael says to Moshe. They're going to believe in you. So the amun, the amun in the Torah that it's an emes of Torah, Torah's Moshe, which is one of the Yud Gimel Ekrim, and the Imam of the Amun Yishraim, Moshe Rabbeinu HaYehav, and the Ziyin, is because 
the eating herbs the Rabbani Shalom and the and the Hal Sinai, the way the Rabbani Shalom appoints Moshe Rabbeinu to give them all the Klalim and the Pratim of the Torah, which he's going to be Mikabayim in the 40 days. Let them hear the way I speak to you, and therefore the Gandacha Yaminu Liyayim. So we believe only in Moshe Rabbeinu. Not, not, because we all saw that he was appointed by the Rabbani Shreyim. And, and therefore we know that he said to Tzayra Because if the Rabbani Shreyim picked Moshe Rabbeinu, the Rabbani Shreyim would have known that Moshe Rabbeinu will always tell us the Amos. Moshe Amos was the Rasa So that's why we don't believe in Mitzvah Smir because of Abraham Avinu. We don't believe in Gedan Rashi because of Yanke Avinu. We believe in Mitzvah Smir because Moshe Rabbeinu told us in the title that it was given to Abraham Avinu. So the first Mitzvah that Moshe Rabbeinu was told was the Chaydesh HaZolachem. That's Mitzvah Rishayna. She was Tavu Yisrael. al the truth is that there were revelations by Cloud Yisrael that, that prove irrefutably that Tehras Menash Mayim given to Moshe Rabbeinu they also saw Yetzirah Mitzchayim they all saw the man so maybe they also see such things but, yeah, but you have to pay attention to them there are wonderful, wonderful things happening to them. It's a mitzvah to learn history. My rabbi, Rabbi Mandelavich, used to give us more, so why we don't learn Jewish history? In Jewish history, we're going to see the flies. Well, how, how the Jewish nation lived and survived all the oppressors, all the big, all the big uh, empires who wanted to be master of them. We survived Greece. We survived Rome. We survived all. Uh, we survived uh, 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 all of them. Those who wanted to that that, that wanted to wipe out Hashem and annihilate and by Yisrael, Yisrael, they're they're off the map. We remain. And the Yavitz, the Rabbi Yanke Ramzin, writes in his Seifer, I swear by, by my head that the existence of Kala Yisrael and the Golos among all the oppressors is a bigger nest than Kriyat Yamsuf. It is so. It's in history books, you're going to find it out. It's a myth to learn history. Uh, the Mephashim, uh, the the, the, the uh, um, I can't say to Mr. Sassay, but the Torah wants you to learn history. The Torah says, V'chaya yamais oilam, binu shnais daya v'daya, sh'ala v'icha v'yayayitcha, z'kenecha v'yayimrolach, v'hamcha l'adim gayim, v'atchidi b'nei adam, learn the Jewish history, z'chaya yamais oilam, binu shnais daya v'daya. See how every generation, what happened, and see how Yidin survived, how Yidin lived. The survival of the Torah is another mess. Which culture, which which ancient culture ever survived? The Roman culture survived. Greek, Greek, Greek culture survived. There's a few book professors in, 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 in the universities who hack a chiming about, you know, those, uh, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the literature from the Romans and the Greeks. Well, both professors. <laughs> Parthus. But it didn't survive. Who's interested today? Taira today is a living, a, a, a living entity. Yidin live by the Taira. Yidin shuckle over the Taira and they live by the Taira and the Machayim at the Taira. And at the end of the war, when, when the, 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 the bastions of Taira became part of in Europe, everybody thought, that can't come Shabbos. No, not a rabbi, not a rabbi. Taira rose up again, a little bit in America, and especially in Eretz Yisrael. And we're the least in that even got Eretz Yisrael so that the Taira should flourish there. 
Can I tell you the narrative of Israel to a certain degree in America, but certainly not com comparable to Eretz Yisrael. The Torah and Eretz Yisrael today flourishes might a bit, might a bit. I know the, the, the right to the Adas or all those um, to, the Yiddish and the Samaritan, they can't take it, and that's why the, and, and that's why they want to wipe out the Haredim, you know, the parasites. But they can't take it. But the fact is because they see that Torah is flourishing like never before since we're in the Gullahs. Just 50 years after, it was almost wiped out. 50 years afterwards, uh, after, after the Holocaust. Titus flourishes. Titus flourishes now, it's just like. And all the needs that the Rebbe made for the Eden and all those wars, which, that, that the Rebbe wants to preserve the Yiddish Yishev, because they are the standard bearers of Titus today. Like the Afghan is like it says in this we said it. The Afghan Zay the Yaisam the Yarat Saizaya Malay Maastam Malay Gautam La Khalaisa. So the Gemara says Lay Mastam that Raibishka in the times of of the of the Greeks is the Raibisha Taikishtaut Matasyo and 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 the Malay and the times of of the Madai Matriya Tzadik and the Sanhedrin and Nesta to keep Taira going in the times later uh in the times of of the Romans, Rabbi Rabbi Akadish who wrote down the Mishnah, and then the Gemara was written down. It's supposed to be in this week's Tehachem. The existence of Taira, the survival of Taira, the Tchiyas and Meisim of Taira, after everybody thinks that it's death, we see these things. Anybody with eyes has to be minded. We just don't pay attention to it. There are many things in the Torah which all the the Hashanim, the Achrayim bring out, which show the endness of the Torah in the Gaiish in, in, in the Gaiish New Testament. I never brought Hashem. Uh, uh, and I, I never read the New Testament. I'm not interested in the Torah's Mishpan. But there are some people who did. Like, did I you saw did? Because they had to know, just like this Mahabran has to know. So the fact is, the New Testament never promises anything. It never tells you what's going to happen. They don't dare say what's going to happen. One thing they say, what's going to happen? That Eden will never come back to Eretz Yisrael and they're never going to get to Yerushalayim. And now they have a big problem. I have long stories to tell you about this, but the time doesn't allow it now. The problem that the Catholic Church has now. Because the, the, the fact that uh, we know that that's not, that's not uh, we know that that's not the genuine thing. What's happening in the, the government now in Eretz Yisrael, it's not the genuine thing. We're waiting for Mashiach. But according to them, they, they see that the Eden come back to Eretz Yisrael. And they're putting up, and they're fighting tooth and nail that Eden shouldn't have Yerushalayim. Because according to their testament, Eden will never have Yerushalayim. So the, so the, the, the Catholic Church, the Pope wants that Yerushalayim should be an international city and, and all that. Because in, in their testament, it was said Eden will never have Yerushalayim again. The fact is that Eden will live in Yerushalayim. And I, I already brought Hashem right in the past years, already rented an apartment in the old city, in Yerushalayim, two minutes from the Kaisa Maravi by foot. <laughs> if anybody comes, they come into me for a cup of tea. And from his own And, um, and, uh, and the, uh, but they, they don't promise anything. Our Torah promises. Our Torah knows what's going to happen. And the Torah isn't afraid that the promise won't come true. The Torah tells you you should come three times a year to Yerushalayim. But if you come with your family to Yerushalayim, maybe the Goyim will come and they're going to ruin your field and they're going to steal the tzvur and they're going to and they'll take away your bayimus. So the Pasuk says, Shalish Paman Bashana, you should come to Yerushalayim. V'layach mait ishis atucha ba'alaisucha le'ra'it as p'nei Adon Hashem. 
Nobody will covet your your uh, edit. Nobody will steal from you. You're like, when you come back, you're going to find everything intact. You can even leave the doors open if you have the token. How can the Torah promise a thing that happens three times a year if the Torah has a, if the, if the, if, unless the Torah knows that it's true? So Eden lived in the Beis Hamikdash in the times of the Beis Hamikdash for almost a thousand years, and they lived in Eretz Yisrael for more than a thousand years because before that you had the Mishkan Shilai, and they went to three times a year, and every time. <laughs> they knew that the Taya promises. They had a promise from the Taya. The Yachma Dishes Africa. Yankov Avinu and Moshe Rabbeinu both did the same thing. Yankov Avinu Pashas for Yechia, Moshe Rabbeinu Pashas for Zaysa Baracha, told the Eden exactly where the Nach, where each Shavit will have its Nachla and Eretz Yisrael. Yeah, but in the Pesukim of Vayichi, it was Eitzah Bracha. Zvulun v'chayf, Yaman Yish, Kainat v'chayf, and Niyah Yish, Yachat, 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 Exactly the way Yanki the Maisha Rabbeinu told them they're going to have it. And we know today, historically, that it all fits in. We know each, each, each part in Eretz Israel, which belong to which shape, we know that. They promised, and it was true. The Torah promised. There's a certain thing that we see today that somebody. Even being blind can be much as that. The Mayra Tzika Haftacha of Shemitah. Next year is Shemitah. Shemitah starts this year in Elul, La Halacha. We're already not allowed to work on the, uh, uh, and do certain abides on the field from Elul to Shem Sama. The title promises, the Feast Sama, you're going to say, Manaycho Bashana Shemitah. So the title says, last week's Sabbath, the the will make a bounty in the sixth year, the Yasas of Satsbua, the Shreish Hashanah. And you're going to have a Shefa, a bounty for three years. But you wouldn't be able to work or cut or whatever. Taylor promises. A farmer doesn't work on his field when it comes in the sixth year starting from Elul. He doesn't work the whole, the whole seventh year. And he doesn't work until after Sukkot, because the Allah of Shri is, like the Gemara Dash, it, it goes on until after Sukkot, the Gemara and Rosh Hashanah, none in other places. And then, they first start planting. And they need school for three years. And when the Tia it's four years. Where are they gonna eat? The Tzidisi is the Khati Bashana Ashishis. There's gonna be such a chef in the sixth year, there's a side in that, because the sixth year is Yaisa, if Yaisa is Bracha. Uh, so so yeah, that, that is gonna just like the sixth day prepares for Shabbos. So the sixth year prepares for Shemitah, which is Shabbos eleven. <coughs> the chef starts Shabbos of the So it prepares. And every farmer knew that he can't work. And when, and when they came the eighth year, he planted. And he had Tzvua. Abracha went into the Tzvua into the, the sixth year. And they had enough to eat. It's a promise that Taylor made. Every seven years they experienced that. But here's where the picture is Nagaya to us. Today, uh, these big Nisan that since Eden uh, started, uh, the, uh, since Alice and Eden after the war started uh, uh, having farms and keeping Shemitah, there are big Nisan 
that thousands and thousands of people saw and had documented Nebuchadnezzar. For all those that wanted to keep Shemitah. The first one who brought up Shemitah right after the, the Tavsh and Chas war was a big tzaddik. I knew him. He used to come to America very often. Chabunyamin Mendelssohn, the, the Rav of Kananius. Kananius is the, is the Mokai Mashmita. So Rabbi Yamin Mendelssohn was a letter from him, the way he describes what happened. It was the year of Tafsh and Yudbeis, a year of Shemitah. They didn't work in the fields. After Tafsh and Yudbeis, after circus, they were first starting plowing the field and then seeding it and then waiting it should grow. And I know the farmers, they hush him around, or those who wanted to use the hatter of the Mizrahi. So, so they were laughing at them. You're going to starve. You're going to go, go bankrupt. So the Yemen Mandelton and the Briska Rav and the Chazaynish was Mechazakim, keep Shmita, keep Shmita. And and um, the farmers all around them, all around them, were planted in the year of Shmita, when you're supposed to plant, at the, at the end at the end of the summer. And then, um, and, and then, they were waiting for rain, and the circus, uh, uh, when it's supposed to start raining, it didn't rain. And being that they planted the seeds were on the ground and there was no rain, so the seeds became all dried up and they became rotten and they didn't grow. In Kaimaneus, they didn't plant in Shemitah. And they waited until after circus. After circus, they first started planting. But they didn't have any seeds to plant. They wanted to plant wheat. There was no wheat to plant. Because which wheat are they going to take? Wheat that grew in Shemitah. They didn't want that. Didn't want that. So they got up a certain kibbutz wheat that grew Bashishis the year before Shemitah, but it was old wheat and it was broken kernels and it was rotten kernels. It, it was wormy kernels. And all the, all the uh, agri ag agricultural people told them, this won't grow, it's rotten wheat, it won't grow. But it didn't have any wheat uh, 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 other than this. So that Mendelssohn said, that I wish I would show you in this life. Uh, and he was encouraged by the Hazaynish. And he said, plants, and the Irish have a moon and the high Elamim and plants. So they planted, and it grew. So all the wheat that all the farmers around planted, being that it didn't rain, became all spoiled. Being that they planted first after circus, and the rain, the first rains came very late, it came around Kislev or Teves, so theirs, theirs was fresh wheat, and it didn't get rotten. And the Irish made a mess, and, and the wheat did grow, and they got such a bounty of wheat. And everybody, all the farmers around had, 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 had they, they, they were, uh, uh, it, it was a disaster. They had nothing. And only zeal wheat grew from all the other farms around. So this is documented, and, it, and, and people saw it around. And there's a letter where, where, where uh, members now alone wrote it down and said that people should know. And then, in Tafshin Yud Tess, there was another year of Shemitah, and all the farmers around uh, didn't keep Shemitah, they kept Shemitah. And when it started, and when the, the Tzvuas started growing, a disaster, the Arbe came. Uh, Marcus Arbe, Aishavik. Uh, uh, and uh, and uh, it's a 
see that all the tzvuk of all the fields, man Yeshu it went from field to field, clouds of Alba, clouds, clouds of Alba, zillions and zillions came, came swarming and they ate up all the tzvuk and they kept them moving in one direction. When they came to Kaimemius about faith, they turned around, all the tzvuk was eaten up, Kaimemius tzvuk was drew. And the Briska Rav told us, uh, um, like Mendelssohn, that this story he wants him to publicize. Everybody should know. And he publicized it and it was written up in the papers and they all know about it. It was in the, the year of Tavshin Yud Zion. So the Seth Nut, that the, um, the Jewish agency, they got money from America, you know, from the and Kayamas and everything, and they started planting fruit trees all over Alice's soil. They came to Kamenius, and Kamenius registered they also wanted fruit, that they should plant orchards on their land. They refused. The, 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 the uh, Sasnut refused. He said, because, you're, because if we're going to plant trees, and then Shemitah is going to come, and you're not going to tend the, the trees, like the Allah is during Shemitah, the trees won't grow, and, the, and it's young saplings, young trees, and it's going to be ruined. We don't want to spend uh, millions of, of lirot, uh, that's what the currency at that time, uh, and it should go uh, to waste. So they, they didn't grant them any trees. When Tavshin Yud says that the uh, Mendelssohn spoke to the chief of the arcade, the one who was in charge, and he was very impressed by him, and he sent down the crew to plant trees. But the uh, Mendelssohn made it tonight. Next year, Tavshin Yud says, we are not going to tend the trees. They're going to grow wildly. In case we see that the trees aren't there, uh, uh, we won't do the avidus that the Yishevanara says you're not allowed. Well, he, he, if some, he got, um, if for some reason, the, the, uh, the one in charge, the one in charge uh, said, okay, we'll see. And he, and he did send it to. And he said, you're putting it into Sakana. We invested a half a million lirais. You're putting it into Sakana. Because Mendelssohn says, we believe in the Torah. It's easy in Bechazi. And the chay, at the end of the Chaydash Av, when the trees yield their, their, their fruit, the inspectors came again together with this, uh, this chief, and they saw the fruit growing in Kaimeyus, and it's in the files, in the government files, it's a written report that the orchards of Kaimeyus Flourished more <laughs> It was a written report that the orchards of Canemius flourished more than all the other uh, Pardesim which were under his uh, charge. We see today. Yidin, in, in, in the last Shemitah, there was a big bounty in Israel. And, and, and more and more join, because they hear the maps and they hear, and, 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 and they have the tachin. They swim the farmers, you know, those like, like the Mizrachistan and those that always used to have the head, or they used to use the head that, uh, that today is the Kuchmafesh, you can, you, you can work on the fields. So they, they, but they see the place of Shemitah, so they, 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 they join ranks. Last time Shemitah, seven years ago, 4,000 farmers in Eretz Israel kept Shemitah. This year, many more than keep Shemitah, Be'ezer Hashem. And then this was what Mashiach Many more are going to keep. And this is the Shana Hashishas. Currently, it's the sixth year. And... Uh, and uh, and it's a sixth year, and everybody knows I made it my business. I have a son living in Alt Israel, and I have friends to meet them in Alt Israel, and I am in, in contact, say with them. And every time 
We're starting from right after circus. Every time I spoke to anybody in Narrative Square, I asked them, is it raining? Because it was a drought the last few years. And the Kinetics is very, very low. So they told me, it's raining taxi cabs. It's stormy, stormy weather. For years and years, there, were, there, weren't, there wasn't so much rainfall as this year. It's the Shana Hashish this year. You can see that it's least as the Chazi. So, the mindset is that the Shayrish of our Amuna, like I explained before, is not intelligent. How can I? Because we even saw the, the big maestros and the witness that they all witnessed that manage that a house in night. Uh, and they saw those big maestros. And because of that, our moon is based on them. But there is a certain house in night which didn't stop at the end uh, of Martin Taylor. Because Martin Taylor is only temporary. Like the Ramban says, Saifash is boy. That the Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim is the aside of our moon of us. We all saw the big Maifsim. And the Rabbani Shalevan is not going to show Maifsim to every generation. He, he showed once. Because the Rabbani Shalevan made the world. And Shoshis made races. And he put Klolim of Teva, the laws of nature. The laws of nature is the Torah of nature. Just like we have to... Uh, Put on children because the parents says, Why are you the other side? A bird has to fly. Because it says, We are the other side of the earth. Just like we have to wear tzitzis, a tree has to grow. Because it says, By my inspiration, it's a tzitzi, a tzitzi, a tzitzi, a tzitzi, a Everything in nature is, is tired. The tire dictates it. And everything in the world, the bird that flies, the 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 the, 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 uh, the tiger that hunts the the, the stream that flows everything is out tire they keep the tire the difference is we have a pechira has the shalom not to keep the tire nature has no pechira but but just like the tire is the ratzon Hashem the laws of nature is also the ratzon Hashem the Rabbi Shalom doesn't want to make life come and, and break the laws of nature. He does it sometimes when it's necessary, just like a necessary under certain circumstances. Or sometimes an available shema is being called for. So in certain periods, I wish to break the laws of nature. By the other segregation, by the other segregation, by your custom, by the near, the guy who arrives. Oh, but the Rebbe wants to keep the laws of nature. So it's enough that the Rebbe made one Nitius Mitzrayim, and that's enough for us. And we, and we have Eidus on the Zayr after Zayr, who tell us the stories of Nitius Mitzrayim. But there's one law of nature, like Mamish House Sinai, that exists today, and everybody can see it. That's Shemitah. The place of Shemitah never is well. The place of Shemitah and Eret Yisrael defies all the laws of nature, just like Martin Feuer did. That, and that is the deity, one of the endless pshatan of Ma Inya Shemitah Eitel Hal Sinai. Shemitah has a shaykhus of Hal Sinai. Just like Hal Sinai is the shaykhus of our Amuna, the Rebish has showed us that when he wants, he violates the laws of nature. Shemitah is also that same way. But Shemitah is forever. Hasinai is temporary. And this is the Shana Hashishas. Tzvizi is Bachasi. And we hope that Mashiach will come soon after all of Tavshin Samach. Those Shadra talks about Yoibu coming back. The Shadlas is also, the Shadlas is also, you're not going to come back. Every individual who sold, who sold as a neighbor will come back. It's like the Tzius Mitzrayim, you know our brother means Tzius Mitzrayim, Shmi, uh, and Yoibu, for 50 times the Tzius Mitzrayim, so the mother is Tzius Mitzrayim. Every other goes out for Chayvus in Yoibu. Everybody goes back to his Nachla in Yoibu, like the, 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 um, Haftaira of Yemiel last week. This year is Tavshin Samach. 
Kavshin Samach is the Gematria of the Shavala Akuzal say. I generally don't say Gematria is here. But uh, here I'll say it. It's, we're, we're holding the Shia should come. Now, I would wish and I would thank you that when Mashiach will come and we're going to ask him, Mashiach who brought you? So the able to point with his finger on you and on you and on you and on you, I'll know you, you Bachrin, who in such a difficult year, with so much nasiyanus, when the street is full of schmutz, when you have to go mamish with a handkerchief over your eyes, blindfolded in the streets, when everything is so full of schmutz, when the culture is full of schmutz, the internet and the television and the radio, and, and if you don't see it in the, uh, in, 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 the, uh, in the show window after it, all the other tumors that you have, and remaining Eden and learning Torah, which and 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 perpetuating the big mitzvahs of the mitzvahs of Torah, learning Torah and keeping Yiddishkeit, uh, and he is going to point to you and say, "You Bachem, you brought Mashiach." So, I, I wish that to see you, Sister Hazana, in a have a very good. For a share on the topic of a deeper understanding of the Eved Ivri, the slavery and redemption, given Tavshim and Ches, as one. We share the topic of Yevil, the creator of the roots, in the top of Shemak Beis, and two. We share the topic of an explanation of Ma'in Yishmita Eitzel HaSinai, and proof from his passion for Mashiach, plus three.